All right, should we make a bouncy ball? Uh, sphere is my basic primitive object for a bouncy ball. Now remember, after I've made that sphere, I can open up my attributes window, click the third tab, polysphere. I can give it a name, new ball. And I can adjust the radius. I can adjust the subdivisions to make it more efficient. I'm gonna go with 16 because it's a good number. It'll still be soft edge. 16 sections and 16 subdivisions along the height. And I don't need to model this because it's a bouncy ball and I already have a sphere, so I'm just gonna go ahead and texture it now. I have three balls over here. Let's make the red one first. Just like before, I'm going to right click to create or assign a new material and I'll select Lambert from the list and from my color, click on this icon to get a file. You can see it turns white when it's ready to receive that file. It's like a blank canvas. And then browse, I click on the window here and it's automatically taking me to my textures folder because that's the last place I was in my materials. And I can find the bouncy ball number one. And hey, look at that. So it almost is mapped correctly just by default. It's a little pinched there at the poles, but this is uh, this is how it's mapped. Each primitive object has a default layout of the UVs. You notice the cube was kind of like unwrapped the way you'd make a cube out of paper. It had like six sides all together and I had to change that. But this one looks pretty close to what I want, so lucky me. Let's look at the UV texture editor and see how that's laid out, okay? So this is how Maya has laid out my sphere in this one grid square in the UV texture window. This means it's gonna stretch toward the middle because these polygons are getting wider, but my UVs are still squares here. Toward the poles, it's gonna squash and stretch vertically because of the nature of the geometry. These are more narrow horizontally, but more vertically stretched. So the stretching gets inverted. And then at the very tip where the poles are, we actually go to triangles. That's because there just isn't geometry. There aren't squares here. They're all coming to a point. So the UVs have to reflect that, which is why we get a little bit of pinching, a little bit of seams there, if you look closely. It's not that noticeable. If the ball is small enough, no one's even gonna pick up on that. That's one of those seams that's almost hidden to begin with. So I'm kind of happy with that. I could try to use one of these different mapping modes, cylindrical mapping or, hey, spherical mapping. See what happens when I do that. Let's select all the faces. I go to face mode and double click a face there. And then I try spherical mapping. And this is what I get which is not really that much different. It's actually spread it out over more than one grid. So the default mapping of a sphere is basically spherical mapping. But look, it has a little bit of weird stretching there too at the top and bottom. So I can just undo that and it'll go back to my default mapping coordinates, okay? The axis here on the UV editor, if I move this, you see where it's blue? That's the zero U and the zero V, okay? The U is the horizontal axis, the V is the vertical one, I think. So that's zero. And so it's actually ma mapping it from zero to one in the U and 0 to 1 in the V. If it's over here, this is actually repeated, but now we've flipped, so we've gone negative U to negative 1 and positive 1 in the V. Down here, it's negative V down to 1 and negative U down to 1. Over here, it's negative V all the way to 1 and positive U to 1. But that brings up a good idea here with my view options. I can actually turn off that grid here in the UV editor, or just like in my 3D view, I can open up options for the grid and I can adjust that. So right now, my grid is 10 units long and 10 units wide. I can raise that or lower it and I have grid lines every 0.1 unit. If this box is checked, you can see the axes. You have to apply all these changes. I can hide the grid lines. The grid ends now at one unit and it has these grid lines. So there's 10 grid lines with each single unit. But if I extend those out to 10, then you see my grid keeps going 10 units wide. I can make those adjustments depending on how I want to view it. Under image, I can display the image or not. I can uncheck that and I've got dim image checked. I use the uh, icon for that to make it go dim. And I have all these other options too. Under image range, if I open up this box here, I can adjust the range at which my image is repeated. So I can just make this minimum zero, the minimum U and the minimum V. Watch what happens. Now it's actually only showing one instance of that image instead of four. But if I want that image to repeat 10 times on each side, I'll, I'll put negative 10 as my minimum U, negative 10 as my minimum V, and then 10 as my positive U and 10 as my positive V and apply that. Boom, now I have the image repeating 10 times. The default, I think, is just one unit in the positive and one unit in the negative. So really I've got four, four instances of that image, it's still going to repeat it even if I move out here on the gray. This is just changing how it's viewed. So the bouncy ball, that was kind of an easy one. I think it's basically done, but it was a good opportunity to look at some of those things. Now let's make a little star ball. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated. I want to go ahead and create a new sphere and I can assign a new material to it. Lambert, color, file, and browse for the bouncy ball number two. 
I can tell that's the right texture because it has a star on there, but look how stretched that is. So now I have to do a little bit of UV editing to get this how I want. I haven't changed the geometry, so I can still scale down my sections to 16. And I can rotate this around so I can see the star. All right, so I got to map this now. Let's take a look at the UV texture editor, and we'll see that it's got the default mapping here. But how do I want to map this? Well, I'd like to get that star at the end on the poles. So one way I can do that is with planar mapping. Now watch closely. I'm going to select a certain number of faces and then project my map onto them just like I'm using a projector. That's planar mapping, okay? So I have to get my four up here and I'll go to a side view or front view and I'm in wireframe mode but if I go to face and I select let's say this dish or bowl on the top and then I click this button planar mapping to create a new projection, a planar projection onto these selected faces. Now that didn't do what I was hoping. It seems to be projecting from the side not the top. So before I do anything I I've got attributes here that come up for my projection. My projection itself has attributes. So in the attribute editor, I can rotate that projection 90 degrees. Let's see, if I go to my UV texture editor, now I can see something has changed here. If I move this shell around, it's selected, so I'm gonna move this UV shell, and it looks like I'm close, but look how oblong that is. How did I get such a weird oval shape? What I can do is I can use this projection, I just don't want it three times. So in this view, in the UV texture editor, I push R to get my scale tool, and if I have that shell selected and I pull on this one handle, I could scale this down to more of a spherical shape. Now look at my 3D view. That's getting more like I want it. Still a little too big, so I'm going to scale in uniform, uniform dimensions. And that's about right. I can kind of clean that up. But I have now that top set of faces that are hovering over the ball. I have a little bit of that blue showing through, and maybe I can clean that up. But more or less, I think that's what I want. I should have done the top and the bottom at the same time. If I go back to my side view, I want to have the same thing on the bottom, so maybe I should just select the equivalent faces on the bottom and project them through both at the same time. I could just leave that one where it is and do the bottom, but let me do a new planar projection. It's going to just change from what it was. The old one goes away. And again, it seems to be projecting from the side. So let's see if I can rotate in my attributes 90 degrees, just punch in the numbers. And that looks like maybe all I need. So if I open my UV texture editor now, in fact, it's better than it was before. And it's projecting that star on the top and the bottom. All I have to do, let's move it over to this one to get it out of the way. I can put it on any one of these actually and it's the same thing. It's just repeated. So I can put it down here 